The USB feature of the new ESP32 chips is handy. Unfortunately, it is not easy to use because the information is hidden. This video shows how everything works and how you must set up the Arduino IDE to exploit the USB functionality. I promise it will save you a lot of frustration and time. And it is the basis for a future video about simple debugging with the new Arduino IDE 2.0. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. The universal serial bus or USB can emulate keyboards or create a USB stick. It also can save a few parts, like the USB to serial chip, on your PCB. This is why it is one of the significant improvements of the ESP32 S2 and S3 and the ESP32 C3. If you compare the parameters in the Arduino IDE of the old ESP32 with those in the ESP32 S3, you see that many new ones starting with USB appeared. We must understand the USB architecture used in the Espressive chips to use them. And finally, you will get ready-made settings with all parameters for your projects. In one of my last videos, I introduced the ESP32 S3 as the next generation of ESP32 chips. I will concentrate on this because it has the combined USB features of the C3 and the S2. If we look at its block diagram, we find the word USB in two blocks, USB Serial JTAG and USB OTG. A bit later, we find that the S3 offers one full-speed USB OTG and one USB Serial JTAG controller. So it offers two independent USB controllers, not only one as suggested by the pinout, where we only find one USB interface. The S2 chips only contains an OTG and the C3 a serial JTAG controller. Another essential interface to understand the matter is UART0 with its RX and TX pins. To eliminate confusion, we define four use cases. One, legacy mode. As with the old ESP32, we use RXTX and a USB to serial chip to program and for serial print. Number two, CDC mode. We use the CDC mode for programming and serial print. This mode works in the C3 and the S3. Number three, OTG mode. We enable the second USB controller to emulate keyboards, for example, or offer the ESP32 as a disk drive like a USB stick. This mode works in the S2 and the S3. And the fourth use case, UART and OTG mode, where we use two controllers. We start with the legacy mode because we all know it. It works exactly like with the old ESP32. We need a USB to serial converter chip and must keep GPIO zero low during reset to bring the chip into upload mode. This can easily be checked in the serial monitor on 115-200 board. The chip writes waiting for download, which means upload in Arduino terminology. It also says that it expects the download on USB or UART zero. As always, we have two possibilities to handle GPIO zero automatically with the famous two transistors setup or using two buttons. For our legacy use cases, the best is to use the automated two transistor setup. For all others, a design with two buttons makes more sense. Why? The reset button is obvious. I always want a reset button on my boards. GPIO zero acts more like an emergency button with the new chips. It sets the chip into upload mode when everything else fails. With serial print, the output shows up on our serial monitor. Everything as expected, nothing new. 
please select these parameters in the Arduino IDE for use case number one. We will later discuss the function of the new parameters. Let's continue with use case two, the CDC mode. First, what does CDC mean? It is a USB device class, like the USB human interface device class, or the USB mass storage class covered later. It offers serial communication over USB. Exactly what we need if we want to omit the external USB to serial chip. This use case works with the first interface of the ESP32-S3 that is restricted to CDC and JTAG. To use this mode, we must connect a USB connector directly to the chips D plus and D minus pins. We no longer need a USB to serial chip and the two transistors set up. If you build your own PCB, you may protect the USB pins against overvoltage with such a chip. Let's look at the needed parameters to enable this mode in the Arduino IDE. The USB mode has to be CDC and JTAG. JTAG means Joint Test Action Groups Standard to Connect Debuggers, a topic of a later video. USB CDC on boot obviously has to be enabled to use it. Otherwise, the chip would not listen to the D plus and D minus pins. The following parameter is MSC on boot. MSC means mass storage class, a USB function mentioned before that uses the second USB controller of the ESP32 S3. It can create a USB disk drive. For the moment, we do not need it. Next is DFU, device firmware upgrade. We do not need it, it can be disabled for all use cases. Next is upload mode. As in use case one, we choose UART0 hardware CDC. The rest of the parameters are well known from the old ESP times and will not be discussed in this video. With these parameters, the ESP32 S3 presents itself differently in the port menu. It adds its name to the COM port number. Very handy. If you reset the chip, it loses the USB connection because the reset button also stops its internal USB controller. When you leave the reset button, you hear the sound of a connecting USB device. Sometimes your computer assigns a different COM port than before. This happens if the uploaded sketch changes some USB parameters inside the ESP32 S3. In this case, you have to select the port again. In most cases, you do not need to use the GPIO0 button to start the upload. Serial print works as usual, this time via our USB port. All in all, the USB to serial chip is neatly replaced. Remember that UART0 with RXTX does not get the serial print statements because its function is transferred to the USB connection. If you want to use the standard UART pins, you must use serial zero print statements. You can use both interfaces in parallel. For example, to connect to a GPS chip with serial zero. Nice. I assume this will be the most common use case for the ESP32 S3. It fully replaces the USB to serial chip, including the two transistors. And if you use an ESP32 S3 on a module, you do not need a lot of external components for a fully functioning board. If we need additional USB functionality, we must switch gears and enable the OTG controller in use case number three. This means we enable the chip's full-fledged USB controller. It can emulate keyboards or mice or create a USB disk drive. You find many example files in the Arduino IDE. Here, for example, it creates a disk drive and adds some text. Or here, it emulates a keyboard when you press the GPIO0 button. This is only possible if we enable the OTG controller using these parameters. USB host mode is currently not supported in the Arduino IDE. According to Espressif, this should change soon. 
That will, of course, increase the usability of those chips considerably. Last but not least, we can enable the UART and the OTG USB controllers. Then we can use the RXTX pins for uploading and printing and the OTG controller for all other scenarios. Printing to serial zero goes to RXTX and serial print goes to the USB COM port. Here are a few tips for working with the OTG mode. First, I would like to return to a remark made before. The USB configuration changes depending on the sketch running on the board. This differs from the legacy modes, meaning the PC discovers other USB devices before or after flashing. Whenever the PC finds a changed device, it creates a different COM port. So always check the actual COM port before and after uploading if you work in OTG mode. It might have changed. Second, if you do not need USB, you can use pins 19 and 20 as regular pins. Of course, this only works in legacy mode. And third, remember the emergency button on GPIO0 if uploading does not work. So, summarized, the ESP32 S3 offers two USB controllers. A simple one that only provides CDC and JTAG serial connections and a full-fledged USB controller for all sorts of USB services. We can use the ESP32 S3 in four modes. The legacy, where we do not need to enable any USB controllers on the chip and just use a USB to serial controller for uploading and printing. The CDC mode replaces the external USB to serial controller with the internal CDC JTAG controller. That reduces the external part count. The OTG mode offers all the native USB modes of a USB controller. In OTG mode, you can also upload via UART. Just adapt the parameters and add an external USB to serial adapter. OTA uploading works with USB. The ESP32 S2 also has a USB OTG controller. The ESP32 C3 only has a CDC controller. If something doesn't work, use the emergency button. This was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.